I got into youth work when I was at a, uh, at a primary school and a young boy, grade three, nine years of age, asked me if he could help me with some equipment and I asked him to get the cricket stumps and as he put up his arm, sleeve came down, I saw three dark marks and I called him over and I said, what's that? He said, showed me reluctantly, there were three cigarette burns. And so I went to the principal afterwards and, and she went on to tell me a lot of the kids from the, that school were coming from similar violent, dysfunctional backgrounds. And that's what made my decision to climb out of that field and, and go into youth work. Establishing the 20th Man Fund nearly 30 years ago, Les Twentyman has devoted much of his life to helping young people, particularly the homeless. I think uh, the 20th Man Fund, we fight the war on disconnected, disenfranchised kids in the trenches. I see them as uh, young people who have been cheated out of their lives. reality of the straight started when I was about 17, 18 and I was pregnant at the time as well so it was a lot harder for me than probably what it would be for most people. Most people go into the drug scene because they can't deal with it really. It's pretty much each day you take it as it comes. You don't know what's going to happen and you don't know if you're even going to survive through the night. Emma's life is now back on track thanks to the crisis care accommodation and support established by 20th Man. As a youth worker, you get the buzz when you get a young person a job, you know, and they get on with their lives and all oh, they're homeless and you find them accommodation and, and through that they're able to turn their backs on other tempting things like drugs and that. And of course on the other side, you know, I've buried, you know, about 80 odd young people in the past 10 years, 70 from drug overdoses and 10 who have been murdered because of drug debts and things like that. They're just a flock of people who have been given the short straw, and uh, we just try to lengthen that straw. How are you? Yeah, good. Bloody cold, isn't it? Yeah, it's freezing outside. <laughs> I'm picking up the bread, which we do every day, because a lot of the clients that come into our office at Footscray haven't eaten uh, since yesterday, and they don't have any money. Uh, you know, a lot of them are homeless, but it's certainly good for their, for their spirit that they're having something nice. From humble beginnings providing Christmas presents for Melbourne's homeless, the work of the 20th Man Fund has grown substantially over the last three decades. We have uh, 150 people who use our office as their mailing address because they're sleeping in squats or, or couch hopping or whatever. And with that, you know, uh, as I said, comes the issues around food and uh, other necessities uh, in the way of uh, school books and things of that nature. The 20th Man Office provides a base for the homeless, somewhere they can seek counselling, see a doctor, get a sense of worth and hopefully get back into society. We're very big at the moment on proactive things like education, where we put something like 12,000 homeless kids through school, uh, 300 through university. You know, we have 43 basketball teams that play every Wednesday and every Saturday have an uh, elite sports program where we've got about 11 young people who one day will represent Australia in either soccer or in basketball, uh, going through the world gym and, um, yeah, and things like that. Yeah, the refuge uh, is primarily for uh, kids who are in crisis uh, and running for their lives in a lot of cases. They have workers around them through Melbourne City Mission who are able to direct them hopefully into longer term accommodation basically um, give them some sort of chance to get back on track. A tireless worker for those who've been knocked about, Les recently suffered his own setback. Les had a, a terrible time last year with a surgical operation that uh, went horribly wrong, nearly lost his life. All I remember was uh, getting on the trolley, uh, being kissed goodbye, and saw the needle go into my arm. And that's all I remember for the next two months, and uh, I uh, nearly died on two occasions. I, I thought it would just take him like years to get over that, and instead of that, he has bounced back because as soon as he was out of hospital, he was back doing what he loves doing, which is being involved with street kids. Liz came along and actually spoke to all our year five, six students. They came away um, ha having a lot more broader knowledge of 
what our youth have gone through and, and also I suppose from 20 years ago up until now and, and saw that there is still a problem on our streets and they really want to do something about that. We thank you for all your efforts in providing proactive programs around sport, recreation and drama and taking a real interest in children. Thank you from the Shark Bait team. He, he sets himself aside from other charity organisations that he's actually in there working with them on a daily basis and lives and breathes the experiences that they go through. I'm only one soldier in a tidal wave, you know, that's been almost disarmy type proportions. We really need to be accountable because I think we're starting to lose a generation of our young people. You know, because of computers, because of poverty, because of polarisation. You know, Les is one of those people, if you ask him to do something, he always puts his hand up and uh, is totally driven by his uh, passion for looking after street kids. We owe it to Les for all our hopes, all our dreams to come true, and they do end up coming true. I may be the conduit for, you know, um, education or food or, uh, you know, a kid being able to play footy, but I'm just part of the team.